This is Public Voice. I'm Scott Festchuk, and I'm here with Rudyard Griffiths from the Dominion Institute and author of Who We Are, A Citizen's Manifesto. In your book, you challenge the notion of Canada as a community of communities. You talk about our shared identity. What mm -hmm. is that shared identity? Yeah. Well, I think we do need to get beyond some of these old kind of bromides about what Canada is or isn't. And I think one of the worst of the bunch was the community of communities uh, quote philosophy uh, best uh, manifested by former conservative leader Joe Clark. Um, and I think that idea really reduces Canada to something uh, less than the, the sum of its parts. It's uh, a vision of the country where it, it sees us as a nation defined by the things that separate us, our differences, uh, differences of region, of language, of ethnicity. Um, and uh, foolishly or not, uh, idealistically or not, uh, I think that there is a, uh, a different Canadian identity uh, that exists in our past, uh, that's relevant to who we are as a people today, and it speaks to, in a sense, the universality of Canadian citizenship and the opportunity to use Canadian citizenship. It's the institutions, uh, the symbol, and the values attached to it to begin a conversation about the things that we share in common, the things that define us not as Newfoundlanders or Quebecois, uh, not as uh, members of any one ethnic or linguistic group, but instead as citizens of Canada, members in this collective democratic uh, experiment uh, that hopefully uh, we're all uh, engaged in. You talk about the Canadian citizenship and the idea of using it. In what way would yeah. you use it? What are you advocating? Two ways. One, um, for newcomers, uh, we have some real problems. Right now, 40% of all uh, skilled and professional male immigrants leave Canada permanently within 10 years of arrival. So these are the very new Canadians that we know with our shrinking uh, workforce, our flaccid birth rate. Uh, these are the people we need to retain in Canada. We need a, a stickier Canadian citizenship. Part of the solution, obviously, is dealing with all these issues around skills, accreditation, work experience. But I think that's only part of it. I think the other part of it, the mistake that we've made, is that there are very few qualitative differences of your experience of Canadian citizenship if you are a resident in Canada versus living abroad, often permanently, as one of these so-called citizens of convenience. So I think by by kind of shortchanging newcomers who are settling here with their families, who are having to learn a new language, who are having to struggle up the economic ladder, but who are putting down roots permanently in Canada by offering them so few additional benefits of citizenship beyond uh, that citizen of convenience living abroad, I think we shortchange the potential of our own citizenship to make sure that newcomers uh, are here living in Canada for the long term and contributing to the betterment of our collective society. The other side of the coin, though, which we can't forget and which often frustrates me about discussions about citizenship is it's not all about immigration. It's also about the Canadian born. Uh, you know, I'm 38 years of age. Uh, most of my peers, a lot of my peers, are really civic slackers. They don't vote. They don't volunteer. Uh, they're quite apathetic towards many of the very characteristics that we often wag our fingers at immigrants at, for and say, you know, you're not participating fully in our democracy. You're not reflecting our values. Well, I think we need to take a hard look at the Canadian-born population and ensure that the rights and privileges of citizenship uh, aren't simply what we ask and expect of them, but also a sense of the duties and obligations that go with citizenship that we're, again, very comfortable speaking about in the context of immigrants and new Canadians, but we let in a sense, the Canadian born pretty much off the hook. And how do you actually go about doing that, though? This seems to be we're, we're moving, if anything, on a course further away from the ideal that you're describing yeah. in terms of you know decreased voter turnout, decreased yeah. engagement. Yeah. What action steps do we need to take? Well, and uh, I think in my book, uh, some of the ideas that have elicited a lot of debate is the notion uh, that I think at this point we need to be far more prescriptive. Uh, it would be great if we could think there were ways just spontaneously to manufacture a Barack Obama in a test tube and you know pop him out in the next or her out in the next general election to wake up uh, the slumbering uh, silent majority. Uh, I instead though think we actually have to be prescriptive. We have to think about things like mandatory voting, uh, national civic service, uh, responsibilities that uh, in a sense are, are not always choices of the individual 
but are uh, to some degree manifestations of the state, the collectivity, saying to the individual, there are rights and responsibilities, but uh, your, your, your rights that you enjoy have to be connected to a sense of shared responsibility. And in some cases, those responsibilities, the exercise of them, cannot simply be left up to individual choice. Um, maybe after a period of time of mandatory voting, national civic service, uh, again, also mandatory, uh, we could uh, hopefully have a new generation of Canadians, uh, both newcomers and, and Canadian-born, who are assuming these obligations uh, naturally, uh, effortlessly. But I think to get ourselves back to some point where the glass is half full uh, is going to require uh, some concerted state intervention into the whole realm of democratic uh, engagement, uh, uh, the kind of building up of civil society.